A role is probably exactly what you would expect it to be. Examples might include specific role definitions such as business analyst or programmer or architect, or a role may be more generically defined such as the implementer in RUP. A role may reference guidance, which helps people fulfilling that role to understand how it's performed. Roles may be categorized into role sets, and they will be directly linked to tasks that are performed and linked to work products for which they are responsible. In the Rational Method Composer, the original RUP concept of artifact has been refined. RUP originally only used the concept of artifact to define things that were used and produced in a development project. The Unified Method Architecture defines an extended taxonomy for these concepts. It defines the general concept of work product, which has three different specializations artifacts, deliverables, and outcomes. What used to be called an activity in RUP Process Workbench and RUP Builder is now a task in RMC. To provide a tighter link to process enactment and project management, we renamed the lowest assignable units of work to task because this is the term most commonly used. A task is an atomic description of work that can be resourced and scheduled to role instances. A task has inputs and outputs. It directly maps to Microsoft Project and to RPM Office tasks, web, web for business integration tasks, and so forth. A task has a role assigned as a primary performer and optionally as an additional performer. As much guidance as is needed can be attached to any method content element or process element. Remember, it's there to help explain the definition of the element that it's attached to. And it could be any number of things. It could be a checklist, a concept definition, examples, guidelines, white papers, templates, or any other uh, type of information that would be helpful to the user. The standard categories and custom categories folders are used to define how your published method website will look. Categories allow you to categorize content independent of its packaging, for example, in disciplines and role sets. In this introduction, we won't elaborate on categories, but it's important to know that there are another way to help you organize and customize your method content. You may want to examine this topic later on your own. Within the Standard Categories folder, there are specific subfolders to help you organize core content elements. Typically, these elements are considered standard and don't require customization. In these subfolders, Disciplines is for task definitions, Domains and Work Product Types are for work products, Role Sets organize roles, and Tools is for tool mentors. Custom categories are used to define views in the final website, and so, as you might expect, these are customized from standard definitions to match your actual team and process definitions. In the demo, we will construct or show views of roles and a delivery process. We use content variability to customize content by merely defining the changes from the original for this particular configuration. This might mean adding one additional task to a standard role definition or responsibility for an additional work product to this unique process. An example might be that for this specific project for which we're defining a new configuration, the role of business analyst has an additional task that produces a unique audit document required by the customer for their management purposes. We would use the base business analyst role definition in our method, but we would add the new task and work product to it. We'll see a good demonstration of this content variability in parts two and three of this demo. This is how we'll use it. In the demo, a new role is created, the RUP implementer for SOA, and it will override or contribute to the base role RUP implementer. We also define two new tasks, implement service, shown here as implement component for SOA, and test service, which are performed by our new RUP implementer for SOA role. The implement component for SOA task has a mandatory input work product of SOA service model, which comes from the RUP SOA plugin. 
It produces the output service implementation. The test service step on the left side of the diagram has a mandatory input of service implementation and an output RUP test log, a base element which comes from the RUP plugin. A process is the order of the work being performed. Processes take method content elements and relate them into a sequence that is customized to specific types of projects. As we will see later, processes are described in RMC in terms of breakdown structures, also called process views, that refer to method content elements. Method configurations are published to become your process website. A particular configuration can be viewed from within RMC using either the Authoring Perspective Configuration View or the Browsing Perspective, which only shows the configuration view. But there are differences. The Authoring Perspective Configuration View enables the viewing of all element types. The scope is the currently selected configuration with all of its plugins and component packages. Elements are shown without resolution of any content variability. In the browsing perspective, however, it enables the viewing of pages as they will publish, and all variabilities are resolved using the configuration definition. The scope is the selected configuration defined by its selected plugins and content packages. Process views are hierarchical arrangements of content elements that define the process. There are four basic process views, the work breakdown structure, which shows the tasks needed to perform the activities of the process, team allocation, which shows the roles that perform the tasks in the work breakdown structure, the work product usage view, which shows work products for the tasks in the work breakdown structure, and the consolidated view, which shows tasks, roles, and work products. These views, just like content definitions, can be published to the method website but they also contain the information needed by project managers, and that information can be exported as templates for the project management tools. These views can only be seen by opening a process definition in either the library view or a configuration view. Select the process in whichever tree and double-click on it. Then click on the appropriate tab at the bottom of the editor, as shown in the chart. So here's the method tailoring scenario we will perform in parts two and three of the demo. Your team wants to have a process that enhances the current RUP content around SOA. So, you want to have a process that enhances the current classic RUP delivery process around SOA. Specifically, you decide to add an additional role, that of the SOA implementer. Some SOA-related tasks, implement service and test service, and a new work product called Service Implementation. We'll create a customized delivery process extending the existing life cycle in order to add the new tasks that have to be performed. We'll create a configuration that has the views to be shown on the published website. And last, we'll publish a process website and export the delivery process to Rational Portfolio Manager. In parts two and three of this demo, we'll walk through an exercise that will demonstrate the flexibility of RMC and how it can help team members across the organization. We'll also show you just how easy Rational Method Composer is to use. When you're ready to continue, go back to the demo's web page on DeveloperWorks and continue by downloading part two of this demo. I'll see you there.